This is Radio 4. Today is the 90th birthday of the celebrated authoress Dodie Smith, and our Saturday night theatre is the BBC's tribute to her. Dear Octopus by Dodie Smith, adapted for radio by Cynthia Pugh, with Gwen Franken Davis and Robert Harris as Dora and Charles Randolph. The play is set in the Randolph home in 1938, where Dora and Charles, with their family around them, are celebrating their golden wedding anniversary. Dear Octopus. Dessert. What for? For telling Granny about me and bananas. Did you know that if I eat a banana, I'm sick at once? I shouldn't eat them then. I don't. But I did think Granny would be interested. I just happened to tell her because she was eating a banana. So out you went. Yes. It's funny, isn't it? Lots of children come in for dessert, but I go out for it. <laughs> I wish they'd hurry up. The maids will never get done. Gertrude's stomping about like anything. Oh. It's nice having golden envelopes for golden wedding telegrams. Though, of course, you could send them for funerals if you like. Oh, Bill. Why didn't you come in for dinner? On a night like this? Do you know we've never had the house so full since I came here. Do you like being Granny's companion? Very much indeed. I think you're a very good sort of woman, Fenny. Thank you, Bill. A bit of chocolate? No, thank you. I'll have some sandwiches when Cynthia and Great Aunt Belle arrive. I've never seen Great Aunt Belle. I bet she's a Gorgonzola. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. Hello. Feeling better, Scrap? I wasn't ill. And he just didn't want any dinner. Hasn't Aunt Cynthia come yet? Not yet, but the car's gone to meet her. Did you see the cable from your father? Yes, I'd rather like to see it again. It's here. Congratulations on your golden wedding. Love to Scrap, David Kenton. Would you like to have it? Wouldn't Granny mind? Of course not. Then I think I would. Fancy it coming all the way from Singapore. Not really, you know. They just write them at the post office. I know that perfectly well. I don't think I'll have it, thank you. It's the thought that matters, you know. They don't do that at the post office. But I can remember the thought without a bit of paper, I expect. I'd like to know, and I'll just think you um... You are a blighter, girl. Well, she's so soppy. She's still missing her mother. It's two solid years since Aunt Nora died. I believe she thinks Aunt Cynthia is going to be like her because they were twins. Is she? Like Nora? Not in the least. Oh, poor Scrap. I wish we didn't have any dead people in the family. It sort of spoils the party. Hello. Glory, glory, Uncle Nick. Hello, Bill. <laughs> Don't bat me in the stomach. <laughs> oh, Fanny, my dear. Hard at it, I suppose. Well, things are a bit hectic. Where's everyone? Dinner, dinner. Are you going in? Oh, but don't. Or they'll never come out. Oh, I'm filthy anyhow. Didn't leave the office till after eight. We just landed the contract for all the gusto publicity. Oh, oh. What, the beastly sauce stuff? The, the sauce may be beastly, but the advertisements are grand. I say, did you hear my broadcast last week? Every word. It was beautifully clear. <laughs> you spoke so jolly fast, they had to have a two-minute interval after you. Yeah, they said I was a bit speedy. Oh. Here, what do you think I'm doing with that suitcase? Looking for my present. Present? It's not Christmas. I bet there is one, though. No, that's flounces. This? No, that's for scrap. I say, what's scrap like? Well, pretty sick. You have to be very gentle with her. Here, look out. That's my dress shirt. Oh, there you are, you loathsome boy. Oh! Oh, and uh, this is for you, Fanny. Oh. Just thought you'd like it. Oh, a posy. Oh, Nicholas, <laughs> thank you. Oh, charming. Oh. Hey, Bob! Oh, thank you! Ah, that's all right. Uh, this is Mother's golden wedding present. It's an old necklace I found in the Burlington Arcade. And these are some first editions for Father. Oh, you are a generous person. Mm, nonsense. <laughs> My dear, your hands are rough. You've been doing a lot of dirty work. Oh, odds and ends. We, we've been a bit rushed. I must buy you some nice smelly glycerin and whatnot. Hmm? We advertise some stuff called Lily Hands. It's really rather lousy. I'm not allowed to say lousy. Well, I am. It just shows how unfair life is. Oh, dear, 
evening, Mr. Nicholas. Good evening, Gertrude. How are you? Very well, sir, thank you. Can't you get them out of that dining room, miss? Oh, try not to upset yourself, Gertrude. I'll help you with the washing up. No, you won't, miss. You must be dog-tired yourself. You can't do it, Mr. Nicholas, turning two in family into 14 with only a couple of girls from the village to help. Gertrude, you're not your sunny self. No, I'm not, sir. And if we feel like this now, how are we going to feel by Monday? You should just see Cook's varicose veins. I've seen them, haven't I, Gertrude? And a dance tomorrow, if you please. 30 people oh, coming. She's been so splendid. It's just the sitting late over dinner. Here, I'll rout them out. No, 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 no. Leave it to me. Run along and wash. I'll take your case upstairs, Uncle Nick. Cheer up, Gertrude. Think how slim you'll get. I'll take that case, Bill. You'll train yourself. Oh, you're fine, all right. Hello. Good. Pies. In every room. I know they're a curse, but the house is so cold, and I'm sure we both want everything to be lovely this weekend. Yes, of course, miss. The master and missus have been so looking forward to it, every living child under their roof. And Miss Cynthia hasn't been home for seven years. I always say golden weddings are very beautiful. Only they did ought to come out of that dining room. Wait. Oh, they're coming now. Round you go and I'll be along in a minute to help. And oh, and Gertrude, have you got any hand lotion? That's washing the nursery paint this morning. I have some cream of lotus buds. I'll lend you some. Annie, they're coming out. We're terribly late, Teddy. Is Gertrude Ruffles? Oh, it's quite all right, Mrs. Randall. I'm just going to give her a hand. Thank you, dear. Uh, shall we sit here or in the drawing room? Well, there's a splendid fire here, Mrs. Randolph. Very well, Edna, dear. Just tidy the half, will you? Yes, well, yes. We shall need some more chairs. Can we get some from the drawing room for you, Mr. Randolph? Thank you, Laurel. I'll have it see now. Oh, don't come, Flouncy, because she's going to bed. Oh, Mummy, I can't. I'm oh. terribly full. You should better go for a brisk walk around the garden. Oh, I don't want to go for a brisk walk. I just want to sit still. Sitting still won't digest your dinner. Now run along and you go with her. <laughs> I've got a telephone, Mother. Who to, dear? My secretary. Write her a postcard, dear. A telephone's so expensive. I'll pay for the calls myself, Mother, dear. It's an extremely important business matter. Well, I'll take you, Flancy. I can do a bit of exercise. Go with your father, dear. Oh, right. Your coat's in the cloakroom. And put your galoshes on. I don't have any galoshes. Then borrow mine. You'll find them in the boot rack. I don't like galoshes, Granny. They make your feet look awful. Your father won't mind how your feet look. Come along, Queen of Sheba. That child's getting conceited. She'll grow out of it. I was terribly conceited at her age. And still are ugly. Oh, Hugh. <laughs> it's a pity you two are so plain. It doesn't give that baby of yours much chance in life. Yeah, ah, but we're hoping the baby will inherit mother's classic features. Thank oh. you very much. <laughs> how do you like being a grandmother, Edna? I find it comparatively painless, thank you, Mrs. Randolph. Nanny and I think that the baby's got a look of Peter. Your father? I wish I could remember him. Mm, funny to think Peter would have been a grandfather. <gasps> oh, oh, my mother dear. No, it's nothing, dear. I was just wishing that he could be here. And Nora, too. Oh. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm quite all right now. Now, what about those chairs? Hilda. Yes, Mother. You're hovering. Now sit down. I've got to telephone, Mother. Then telephone, dear, and get it over. You'll find it very drafty. Oh, don't I know. And don't go on talking after the pip, 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 because they charge you at once. <laughs> Hilda's business can't be very well run if it won't take care of itself for a weekend. Oh, she's quite a big pot, really, Granny. What does she do? She's an estate agent. She's put through one or two pretty big deals in house property. It's a surprise to me that Hilda knows the back of a house from the front. <gasps> oh, look at the time. Um, uh, Befenny? Yes, Mrs. Randolph? Uh, have the top Kins girls gone back to the village yet? No, Mrs. Randolph, they're still here. Oh, I promised their mother. Um, uh, Hugh? Yes, Granny? I wonder if you'd run them back in your car. Yes, of course. It's such a long, dark road, and they really aren't right in the head. Uh, tell them to get ready, Fanny. Yes, Mrs. Randolph. You're coming, Laurel. Right, sir. I'll get the coats while you start uh, Edna, off. dear, I wonder if you'd mind having one last look round the bedroom fires, particularly Aunt Belle. Oh, all right. I'm afraid she'll be very, very tired after her journey. Um, uh, take the cold glove, dear, and then you won't soil your hands. <laughs> Marjorie, well. dear, Marjorie, just run along to the kitchen and see if you can do anything. It's really time the sandwiches came in. All right, Mother, dear. Yeah, and just see if Hilda's still telephoning. I don't think she really understands about the pip, pip, pip. Uh, tell her it's 11 pence every time it tips. Oh, were you saying something about chairs, Charles? <laughs> I was, my love, but as you've successfully found little jobs for everyone, 
We've really far more chairs than we need. Oh, so we have. <laughs> oh, well, I shall be glad of a little breathing space before the others arrive. Oh, I do hope everything goes off well. All our children lead such busy lives. I should like this weekend to be a real rest for them. Yes, dear. Now, is there anything you'd like me to do before I sit down? I don't think so, dear. Oh, oh just put another log on, will you? Yes, dear. Charles. Yes, my love? Um, I can't help feeling that we ought to have gone to meet him here. No. You know we decided yes, the best I know, but where we write. Oh, I agree that we mustn't appear to be rushing at her. But just the car and the chauffeur, it's so cold, so unwelcoming. After seven years. Oh, if only I knew the reason. But haven't we agreed to accept the reason she's given? She's been busy. It hasn't been convenient. After all, Paris is a long way. Stuff and nonsense. I'd have popped over to see her long ago if I hadn't been frightened of what I should find. Is that the car? No. Now, don't let yourself get jumpy. Sit back and relax. You know, I'm really very much touched that Belle should want to come down to us this weekend. I dare say she'd be very glad to. She's probably pretty much at a loose end in England. <laughs> I can't imagine Belle at a loose end anywhere. Oh, you must be prepared for a pretty big change in her. I suppose so. Twenty-five years in America. Oh, Twenty-five years anywhere. Yeah. Charles, how old is Belle? I'm blessed if I know. Now, let's see. She married your brother William in 89. I'm sure she's older than I am. Oh, then she must be 71. I think she's older. <laughs> how strange. What? To think of Belle as old, all that red gold hair. <laughs> oh, that'll be gone anyhow. I wonder if she'll be white or just streaky. So many women go streaky. <laughs> but we shall get a bit of a shock. What a... Well, her looks. After all, we've both kept pretty young. You certainly have. <laughs> well, I always had a good skin, and that helps more than anything. I don't think Belle will have worn well. Poor Belle. She'd never have taken William if she could have got you. <laughs> Not. I wonder what her American husband was like. Mm, he certainly left her very well off. <gasps> that is the car. No, no, no. Now, keep calm, dear. Yes, just coming up the drive. Now, Dora, dear, don't excite yourself. It's only Bill. Cynthia isn't there. Oh, Charles. Now, my dear, there are two more trains tonight. She's not coming. She'll never come. No, no, quietly, dear. Bell's just here. Bell, my dear. Charles. It, it's good to see you. Bell, my dear. Isn't this splendid? Dora. Dora, you're as pretty as ever. Well, now, isn't this just too exciting? Now, let me take your coat. Oh. And your hat. Thank you, Charles. There. Bell. Oh. Have I changed so much? You haven't changed at all. If that isn't the nicest thing I've heard since I landed. Oh, I can look better than this. But it, it hasn't gone grey at all. Well, it may be sea green for all I know. It's a good 20 years since I saw its natural colour. Do you mean it's... it's dyed? Well, it's helped. Now, don't go looking at me through a microscope because I can't stand up to it. You want to get a quick general impression. My dearest Belle, you've defeated age. <laughs> Extraordinary. We were just saying that... How old are you, Belle? You don't know? Then nobody knows. Not one soul in the world. Isn't that fine? Aren't you going to tell us? I am not. I never did believe in telling my age. And it won't be any use looking in my coffin because it won't be on that. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Man, it seems a bit silly when one gets to us. I don't like Dora. My mother used to talk like that when she was forty. It's all a question of one's attitude to life. I don't like old age. I don't like anything about old age. And I'm not giving it any sort of helping hand there. Now, let's have a look at you two. Oh, you good-looking couple. 
<laughs> oh, my. It's fun to be back in this room. You know, I don't believe you've changed a thing. We've had new cretons at least three times. Well, they've got the same sort of feel. Where am I sleeping? In little spare. You always like that. Is Moses still in the bulrushes? Certainly. The very fine engraving. I slept there the first time I came here when Will and I were engaged. And that must be... No. No. Never add up years. Hello. Who's here? I'm Bill. Marjorie's youngest. She knows. She sends us presents every Christmas. I expect I'm a bit older than you imagine. You certainly are. She sent me a woolly rabbit. Oh, I do apologize. It's quite all right. The dog liked it. I suppose you're at school. Not just at present. I was expelled. Whatever for? For using bad language. Uh, would you like to know what I said? Oh, I certainly would. We'll make a date for tomorrow. I don't encourage him. It's only a silly little dame school. He didn't say anything very bad. I said all I knew. <laughs> I bet you did. Hello, everybody. Cynthia. Oh, my dear. My dear, dear sister. Mother, darling. Father, dear. Cynthia. Goodness, is it Aunt Bell? Indeed it is. It's wonderful to see you. Thank you. How did you get here, Cynthia? By the bus, I've left my suitcase down at the Green Man. At the Green Man? Oh, Bill, tell Thompson to fetch it at once. Right here, Granny. I'm Bill. I'll be back. <laughs> he was crawling round the nursery last time I saw him. I can't think why you wanted to come on the bus. Mm -hmm. It takes three hours. I thought I'd like to drive through the villages. Things haven't changed much. No electric light yet? Um, it, it's coming to the village next year, but we shan't have it. I never did fancy having the house wired. Oh, just turn that lamp down. It's smoking, Charles. Right. Sit down, dear. Oh, you must be stiff after that jolting bus. I walked it off. I dare you're not in mourning. Heavens no, Mother. Everyone wears black in Paris. That looks remarkable, like Raquel. It is. I work for her. As a man can? Nothing so youthful and glamorous. Just a sort of receptionist and general or jobber. The blouse is less funereal. Oh, you're looking thin, my darling. Thank God for that. I used to be terribly buxom. You two haven't changed a bit. I'm afraid we have. It's seven years. Yeah. Oh, this room shrunk. Well, I suppose rooms always do. Where's Fanny? Where is everyone? Uh, they're, they're about somewhere. Aunt Cynthia? Yes, Bill? This is Scrap, Auntie Cynthia. She particularly wanted to see you. Poor Nora's child, Bill. Oh, yes, yes. Hello, Scrap. This is our very first meeting, isn't it? Yes. How do you do? I hope you had a pleasant journey. Thank you, Scrap. It was very nice. And here's your great aunt Bell, Scrap. Such a lot of new relations. I always thought your name was Kathleen. It is, but Mummy always. I've always been called Scrap. Granny, would it be all right if I went to bed now? You ought to be in bed already. Run along. I'll look in when I come up. I expect I'll be asleep. Good night, everybody. Good night, Scrap. I didn't exactly make a hit. I think she was expecting you to be like her mother. Like Nora. Oh, poor little devil. Oh, I'm very worried about her. I don't at all like the sound of this school she's at. I must write to her father. Bill, go to bed. All right, Granny, but it's no good. The house is so restless. Why don't you show me my room, Bill? Oh, oh Bill. No, no, no. Uh, Sit down, Dora. Come along, Bill. Maybe we'll find some candies. Oh, good. I think I'll go up too, Mother. I want to wash. Uh, shall I? No, no, don't come, dear. Am I in my own room? Of course, my darling. Don't be long. Sandwiches are coming in later. Charles, I knew it. There is something wrong with Cynthia. That cold, hard manner. No, daughter. Oh, we've let it go on too long. We've lost her, Charles. Oh, my poor Cynthia. Anyone can see she's not happy. There, my dear, I know how you feel. She was always your favourite. I never had any favourites. I loved them all equally. But I always liked Cynthia best. Oh, we were such friends.
friends. I wish the whiskey would come it's in. It's coming. Don't fuss. Hello. Ah, Nicholas. Oh, Nicholas, my dear boy. Why did nobody tell me you were here? Hello, Mother, darling. Oh. Mm. Mm. How are you, Father? Glad to see you, my boy. Happy golden wedding. Yeah, the real anniversary is on Sunday, isn't it? Uh, just see if Finny's getting the sandwiches, will you, dear? Oh, you're right. I'll give her a hand. Charles. Yes? What did you think of Belle? It's astonishing. Not a day older. Of course, she always had a magnificent complexion. She never had a complexion at all. She just had a skin. And I shouldn't think she's seen that for years. Oh, Dora, really. It must be very worrying to take a face like that out <laughs> in the rain. <laughs> I do love you when you're being catty. Not being catty at all. I think she's in a magnificent state of preservation. By the way, I've worked it out. Hmm? She's 73. <laughs> I shall wear my silver tomorrow, not my black. <laughs> Whatever you wear, you'll cut her out. <laughs> oh, Charles, I was being catty. You were, my love. You were. You two have been having words? Certainly not. I don't believe you. During my entire life, the slightest disagreement between you has been settled by father kissing you on the top of the head. I sometimes kiss your mother on the top of the head when we have not had a disagreement. <laughs> One way or another, it's remarkable she has a hair left. Uh, sandwiches on this table. That's right, dear, and bring up some chairs. Uh, where's the right. cocoa, Mrs. Randolph? Um, here. Mm, yes, Fanny, dear, on the stool. Right. Cynthia loves cocoa. How about the whiskey? Uh, the whiskey on the table there, Marjorie. Uh, How are things in the kitchen? Looks like a battlefield. Oh, uh, yes. I won't offer you a sandwich, Marjorie, because it wouldn't be kind. Oh, do you really think I'm heavier? Oh, no, no, not more than a couple of stone. You don't take <laughs> enough exercise. When you were a child, you are always curled up in a chair. Couldn't curl up in a chair now, could you, dear? Eh? Rubbish. Oh, well, <clears throat> what's broad in the bean comes out in the bath. Go on, you know you want one. Well, well, just one thing. Hey, come on, Fanny, you must be famished. Oh, I am rather yeah. hungry. Mm. Oh, dear. Hello. Hello, Marge. I say you put it on a bit. Oh, you beast, you're slimmer than ever. Oh, well, you haven't had two children. No, I haven't done that. How are you, Fanny? Nice to see you again, Cynthia. Hello, Nicholas. Hello, Cynthia. Mm -hmm. Hello, Nicholas. Edna, how are you? Can you manage Friday? I've got the seat. Friday? Uh, Friday. Oh, yes, that's quite all right. Uh, dine with me first, then. Uh, Scott? Mm, I'd like to. Better make it seven. Fine. It's very nice for you to have a brother-in-law to take you out, dear. Especially now Hugh's married. I took mm. her out long before Hugh married. Or rather, she took me. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Bill, dear. Uh, this is my daughter-in-law, Edna. Yes, yes, we met upstairs. I'm Marjorie. Save us. You were the skinny one. I'm having a loathsome <laughs> evening. Aunt Bell, you look marvellous. Let me press a very sardiney kiss on your cheek. Mm, <laughs> Nicholas. And not married or anything? Oh, I don't know what you mean by... Or anything. I don't believe Nicholas will ever marry. Neither do I. Let me tell you, I've had my chances. You're a born bachelor, Nicholas. And who is this? Another daughter-in-law? No, no, this I... This is our very dear Grace Fenning. Fenny. My companion. Ah. Don't call her that, Mother. Such a dreary name. Won't you have some sandwiches? Oh, pick. Great Aunt Bell gave me these chocolates. Oh, how kind of Aunt Bell. Oh. You must offer them round. Oh. Oh, all right. Does anyone want one? No, <laughs> no thank no, you. No, no, no. <laughs> sure, it's quite all right. No, thanks, old chap. It's very kind of you. Oh, go on, Mummy. You never say no. <laughs> go to bed and stop in bed. Good night, Granny. Good night, darling. We'll let you off the other good nights. Oh, very well. Uh, couldn't I wait till Flancy comes in? No. And clean your teeth again after those chocolates. I should think my teeth must be joined near worn away. <laughs> Where on earth have you been, Helda? I told you, Mother. Telephone. You weren't oh, really telephoning. Oh, Belle, how nice. Oh. Oh. Cynthia. Hello, mm. Hilda. Oh, what an age it is. You weren't really telephoning all that time, Hilda? Yes, Mother. But it must have been 20 minutes. 21. <gasps> I asked six things. Now, where are you going now? I want to make sure I put the receiver on. And before dinner, it was the bathroom tapped. She went all the way upstairs to see if she turned them off. <laughs> really, I don't think she's quite sane. Well, she's sane enough to make a damn good income. Well, was it on? Yes. Oh, quite sure. Uh, oh, Mother, don't. <laughs> now, now, Hilda, if you go back again, I'll have you certified. Oh, for goodness sake, sit down and let's have some peace. Edna? Edna? Uh, yes, sir, Mrs. Uh, did you bring the cold glove back? No, I'm not. Oh, well, better get it, dear, and then it'll be here when it's wanted. Oh, very well, Mrs. Randolph. I had to let our fire out, Hilda. It's smoking hopelessly. Oh, I don't mind. I'm afraid I do. I'm used to central heating. 
I'm afraid Edna's just a little put out that she hasn't got Cynthia's room. Well, she always does have it. I know she hates sharing. Somebody's got to share, and it's quite obvious that I should give Cynthia her old room. You haven't given me my old room. Marjorie and Kenneth are in it. You're welcome to my share of it. It isn't a full-size double bed, and you know how Kenneth kicks. What discontented children grumble, grumble, grumble. What grumbling, Mrs. Montmorency? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's dead now, poor man. Who is? The grocer's boy with the squint. It was when Nicholas had the measles. Uh, never and... try to explain a family joke, Mother. They sound the merest gibberish. You remember, don't you, Cynthia? Yes, I remember. Ah, Edna. Here's a glove, Mrs. Randolph. Oh, thank you, dear. A kind of soot's come down now, Hilda. Oh, yes. A brick came down that chimney once. Strikes me. We should be very lucky if we're alive in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, madam. Oh, oh do you oh, want me, Gertrude? <laughs> it's the hot water bottle, isn't it? And he's got the mix, madam. Oh. Good gracious. Whose is that with a satin cover? Mine, Dora. Mine, mine, madam. Where's mine, Gertrude? Annie went and gave it to Miss Trapp. Uh, well, will you have the stone one, Hilda? No, Mother. It bruises my toes. <laughs> oh, very well. I'll have the stone one. Give Miss Hilda mine, Gertrude. Oh, no, oh, Mother. Well, not mean... another word. I just want everyone to be happy. All right, Gertrude? Thank you, Madam. Gertrude, that is deep. I was perfectly all right with the stone one. But Mother must Really, I think it's about time we all made a move. Now, we can manage two hot baths tonight and three tomorrow morning. Uh, will you have yours now, Belle? Well, if it'll make things easier. And Edna second. Very well. Uh, you like yours in the morning, Cynthia? Uh, yes. And Nicholas, mm -hmm. will you please not fill the bath to the brim? We must all remember the washing up. Uh, don't worry, darling. I had a good soak this morning, and ah. I'm not counting on seeing a bath again till I get home on Monday. <laughs> What beats me is to think of the state of filth we must have lived in as children. Nonsense. Don't tell me that all these bars people have nowadays are for cleanliness. <laughs> They're for fun. Uh, would you run along, Belle, dear? Well, I suppose I'd better say goodnight. Oh, don't bother, Auntie. We shall go on bumping into each other on landings for hours and hours, yeah. Well, I'll say a provisional one, then. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Finish your dress for the dance, Penny? Oh, I've still got the hem to turn up. Slip it on and I'll do it for you. Would you really? Oh, but there's still the glass and silver to put away. Oh, Edna, dear, you'll, you'll give me a hand with the glass. Oh, very well, Mrs. Randolph. Are you sure you don't mind? I, I would like to have the dress tomorrow if I could. You cut along. We'll clear all this away. Oh, wonderful. I'll get the dress, Cynthia, and then go straight down to the sewing room. Fine. Let me clear up these things. Splendid. Marjorie, mm -hmm. give us a hand. Help to get your weight down. Oh, very well. I can't believe I'm the only one who has to watch those weights. Oh, hello, Kenneth. Hello, boy. Now, come along, Francie. We'll, we'll just say good night. Walked your dinner off, Francie? I wish you wouldn't call me Flouncy, Grandpa. Oh, I must try to remember your name's Gwen. Do you stop being such a vain little peacock? And perhaps we'll stop calling you Flouncy. I'm not vain. If Granny sends me any galoshes, I shan't wear them. You hop off the bed. Now, come on, I'll take you upstairs. I think I walked her a bit far. I'm too tired to go to bed. No, you're not. Come on, you need your beauty sleep. Good night. Good night. Good night, Flancy. Yes, sir, on a very top milk. Oh, good gracious, where is everybody? People just slide away. Uh, Marjorie, uh, no, I want you to... I... Not tonight, dear. You'll be worn out. Just come along to bed. Oh, well, perhaps I will. I do want to be fresh for tomorrow. <laughs> Did you notice how stiff she was? Who? Belle, of course. Those stairs gave her a bit of trouble. You can have your face lifted, but you'll still have to lift your own leg. <laughs> Are you going to lock up? No, not for a bit. Hugh and Laurel are still out. <laughs> I'm thankful to say stairs have never been any trouble to me. I believe she's 77. <laughs> Andrew, have we all gone to bed? Quite probably. Rather a good job. You must find them a bit overpowering. Me? Your family? I adore them. I adore everything here. I'm crazy about large family. That's because you're an only child. I dare say. I wish I had ancestors. Well, of course you have. No. People who are born in flats don't have ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at? Your father's sister. He was exactly your age when he was killed in the war. Come on, Faith. Ready for bed? I suppose so. 
Are there any more family to see? Oh, Belle. I expect she's arrived. And Cynthia. Oh, the dark horse. Shut up. Granny doesn't know about that. Oh. I suppose I'd better turn this lamp out. There. We must have a look at Baby. Oh, Hugh. Isn't it thrilling to think he's sleeping in your father's nursery with your father's old nurse looking after him? The jolly sight more thrilling to think it won't be us he wakes up in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Penny. Hello. It is Dr. Bed. So should you be. I shan't be long. Good night. Good night, Penny. Night. Hello, Nicholas. Where have you been? Putting the car away. Oh. Ah, is that the dress? Oh, mind the pins in the hem. <laughs> Cynthia's going to sew it for me tomorrow. And do you know what I remember you in best? A grey flannel suit and a hat like a little pork pie you wore it the first <laughs> day you came here. I fancy you remembering. You stood there in the doorway, clutching a sort of Gladstone bag, looking exactly like little orphan Annie. <laughs> <laughs> I felt a bit like her. You were all at tea. I thought you were the most superb family I'd ever seen. Mm. And what do you think of us after how long? Seven, eight? Ten years. Oh, you're not so bad. Yeah, but seriously, mm -hmm. sit down a minute. I feel like talking. Oh. Oh, all right. <laughs> I was walking around the garden just now, looking at all the bedroom windows lighted up. There's something rather heartbreaking about family gatherings. How do you mean? Oh, I don't know exactly. I suppose they make you realise the shortness of life. Old age simply rushing at one. We used to be such a nice-looking lot of kids. Look at us now. Marjorie fat as a barrel. Hilda getting completely desiccated. And Cynthia sitting about registering the woman with a past. Oh, Nicholas, don't. I can see any of them like that. Look at your father and your mother. Haven't they grown old beautifully? Nothing grows old beautifully. Our bells are screaming, aren't you? Just held together with sticking blaster. You are the most extraordinary person. I've never known anyone else who was so kind-hearted and yet so malicious. Am I often malicious? Oh, quite often. I wonder if you could be cruel. I expect so. Hmm. How clever of you to find out. Oh, the family. The family. I can never quite make up my mind whether I love it or loathe it. I believe I'd rather give 50 pounds than come to these gatherings of the clan. Oh, rubbish. You like them, really. I wonder if you're right. I've got some sort of horrible fascination. <laughs> I say, why do you let me drivel on like this? Well, what time do you get up in the morning? Oh, about seven. Oh, I am a thoughtless swine. You pop off to bed. You're a very sweet person, Fanny. You look about 14 sitting there in your dressing gown. I'm 29. Crikey, are you? Don't you ever regret the years you've spent with this dreary family? Not one of them, and it's not dreary. Um, I, uh, I'm sorry I said that you were malicious. My dear, it's perfectly true. But I don't think I could ever be malicious about you. <laughs> Your poor hand. It's like a little nutmeg grater. Dear Fanny. <laughs> oh, hello, Edna. Uh, come and get warm. No, here, it's nearly 11. You hop off to bed, Fanny. You'll be dog tired in the morning. <laughs> up so daisy <laughs> Next time. Oh, a bit. Shall I carry you? <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Good night, Edna. Good night. Good night, my dear. Good night, Nicholas. <coughs> Nicholas, I call that the limit, sitting holding Fanny's hand in the firelight. Well, have you gone out of your senses? I know, it's just sheer thoughtlessness. Unless... I suppose you don't happen to be in love with her. Good God, no. Well, you might have a little imagination. Nicholas, will you lock up? You're very well, Father. And see to the fire. Yeah, I will. Good night, Nicholas. What did you mean just now, Edna? If you really don't know... <laughs> ah, perhaps I was just being officious. Good night. Good night, Edna. Mugs. They always have mugs in this nursery. Always, Miss Scrap. Which mug did Mummy have? You see now. Um, well, some of them got broken, of course. Oh, your mother had a bluebird mug. 
Do you mean it might have been this very one? Sure to have been. Now, don't you go thinking about it. But I like thinking about That's it. That's enough, dear. Now, finish your milk. Oh, hurry up, hurry up. I want a paint. No, you don't, Master Bill. Oh. We say grace first in this nursery. For what we have received, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. Amen. Amen, Selfridges! Oh. Why did you say that? I always do. He's a very naughty boy. Come on, let's clear the table. You take the bread scraps. Right. Careful of that lift now. Take a place, Miss Francie. Very well. I want to say, come on, Guinevere. Oh, I'll give Cook a blow on the speaking tube. Miss Scrap, will you help me? Good morning, Cook. Thank you very good friends. Really? I'll be down. She's got her elastic stockings on. Oh, really, Master Bill? Right, down with the lift. Painting. Fill that cup with water, Scrap. All right. Well, you won't get long for your painting. You'll be going out walking in no time. Right. I'll be back in quarter of an hour. I may be going out with Great Aunt Belle. She wants to know what I said at school. What did you say at school? He said, damn blast devil hell and strike me pink. You beast, Francie. It's my language, I tell it. I said, swelp me, too. Swelp you? What's it mean? Something frightful. I don't think much of it. I know a worse word than any of those. You don't? What is it? I couldn't tell you. It's too awful. Oh, go on, Scrub. Oh, she's just pretending. I'm not pretending. It's the most terrible word there is. Well? Well, go on. Go on. Well, tell her. Uh, yes? District nurse. District nurse? But they put that on gate. Oh, you silly baby. Everybody knows what district nurse means. It might have a double meaning, Fancy. Of course it hasn't. No, I'm afraid you've got it wrong, Scrap. But but I'll find out. I say, Fancy, you've made this water filthy. I haven't. You can use any colours you like, Scrap, except cobalt blue. That's my special colour. I don't want your beetle cobalt, and it is an awful word. All right, all right. I told you I'd find out. I'm putting my brush in my mouth. Over and over again. I'll probably die. Oh, hello, Mummy. This is Nanny taking you for a walk. Well, presently, we're just using my new paint box. I oh. say, that is a beauty. <laughs> Far too good for the lad, Nicholas. Oh, nonsense. Do you know Scrap, Uncle Nicholas? Yes, I looked in on her last night. Hello, Scrap. Hello. Oh, careful, Bill. You're running your trees into your sky. Give me the brush. Hey! Oh, there. Just say it. Look, you want to carry that blob of paint right down, like this. Look, you can't have them all in black, Flouncy. What? No, give them some red buttons and oh. uh, and red heels for their shoes. Now, here, bunch up a bit. Oh, Why don't you make that one a zebra? Because it's a horse. Oh, you can make yeah. a zebra with some white stripes. Yeah. Mm. Look, we'll use some Chinese white. Give them some lovely stripes. Come on, Scott. All right. Mm, I'll give them yeah. a jolly old red hat. <laughs> Why don't you have a red hat, Marjorie? Oh, half a minute, Ken. This is quite difficult. Yes, Mum. Oh, hang on, I'll do just a second, Scrap. Why, well, just get under his stomach. I mm. often think I ought to have gone in for that. There. Ah, I don't think that's too bad. Oh, there's a beauty on the next page. Mummy, wouldn't you like to play the piano? Hmm? Oh, Mummy, darling, you smudged it. You are a clumsy old cow. <laughs> <laughs> Never let me hear you use that word again. What word? Clumsy? <laughs> No, cow. You must not call me a cow. But you don't mind me calling you a donkey. Well, I'm not really keen on it. And anyhow, cow's different. You must never call anyone a cow. Well, can't I call a cow a cow? You can call a cow a cow, but you must never call a lady a cow. Now, go and get ready for your walk. No, you'll understand when you're older, old chap. It's a sort of double meaning. Golly, a nice little word like cow. Perhaps Scrap was right. Eh? Hey? District nurse. Mm -hmm. District nurse. Well, what about the district nurse? Don't you mind me saying it? Not if it gives you any pleasure. It's very silly, of course. Told you so, Scrap. Now run along for your walk, all of you, or you'll keep Nanny waiting. Okay. okay. All right. Bye, Scrap. I'll see you later. Yeah. Penny, how heavily you're breathing. Mm. 
There. I give them the whole lot of them red hats. <laughs> Is that Mother calling? Oh, Fanny, did I hear Mother? I'm afraid so. She wants extra eggs from Morton's farm. No, I'm damned if I'll go. <laughs> There's no car road and it's a sea of mud. <laughs> Come on, Ken. We'll slip down the back stairs and hide in the greenhouse. Good idea. <laughs> Don't give us away, Fanny. I won't. Good old Marjorie. She always was a champion job evader. Ah, <laughs> oh, I feel very well disposed towards the world. Do you? Mm. I wake up feeling absolutely sunny. Good. You were a bit on the morbid side last night. Ah, oh, that's all gone. I lay awake this morning smelling coffee and bacon being cooked and felt that things were exactly as they should be. Yes, I feel positively glowing with human kindness. <laughs> what are you looking for? Oh, um, some French chalk to make the drawing room floor slippery. Oh, for the dance. Why will Mother give dances? Does she still insist on dance programs? She does. They've got wedding bells on them. <laughs> then I shall bag six dances and we'll sit out on the back stairs. Last time I sat out on the back stairs, I got kissed on the ear. Fanny, who by? The curate with the wig. I knew you had a past. Oh, I know this stuff somewhere. This is a ridiculous cupboard for a nursery. I'll have to use the steps. Well, oh. that cupboard has its uses. <coughs> the best toys were kept on the top shelf. Here, be careful. Oh, you should have seen me washing all this paint yesterday. I'm very nifty on a step ladder. I got marooned out there for an afternoon when I was about four. How do you mean? Uh, sit on the top of the cupboard. Oh. Oh, all right. Now, the steps were about for spring cleaning, so up I went, and Cynthia came and moved them. So. Oh, you poor kid. It's quite a long way. It is. Come down, oh maid, from yonder mountain height. Oh, <laughs> well, give me the steps. What? Oh, here, come on. I can't stop dallying here. No, I think I'll uh, go for a walk. Oh, come on. All right. <laughs> I'm going to jump. No, 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 Fanny. No, it's much too far. I hope you're down. Uh. Now. Oh, oh. There. Hmm. <laughs> um, has the curate with the wig left you with any inhibitions about being kissed on the ear? I don't know. Then you should find out. No. On the back stairs, remember, it's an assignation. Anything you want from the village, miss? Oh, uh, yes, Nanny. Um, try to get some French chalk. French chalk? I'll try. Let's go in the woods, Nanny. Oh, well, me with a perambulator. Get along with you. Come along, children. Take us in the woods, Uncle Nick. Will you come, Penny? Oh, I'm up to my eyes and jobs. Come on, come on. We'll give the others a slip. All right, all right. Bye, Penny. Bye. <laughs> Have you seen Nicholas? Oh, he's gone with the children. Oh. All right, Penny, you look so flushed. I've never felt better in my life. And Nicholas just left here a second ago. Oh, my dear. What? Penny, please don't think I mean to be officious, but I know how you feel about Nicholas. We all know. What do you know? Oh, my dear, don't look like that. There's nothing whatever to be ashamed of, but he's so thoughtless and... Well, I'm just not going to stand by and let you make a fool of yourself. How dare you? And how dare you? How dare you? Please don't speak to me like that. I'm terribly sorry I spoke. I've done it clumsily. Yes. Yes, you have. Oh, how can everyone know? I've never told anyone. Does he know? No. You see, my dear, if he knew you cared for him, he'd be on his guard. He'd be careful not to. <laughs> you know what I mean. That as it is. Oh, I know him so well, Fanny. He's got such easy, affectionate manners. Any unsophisticated woman might think. He did. Didn't you, Fanny? Please go away, Edna. I wish I'd spoken earlier. All these wasted years slaving away in this house. You're intelligent, Fanny. You could have come up to London, got a good job. Oh, what sort of job? I haven't any training, and I never wanted to come to London. Oh, I've been happy here. There's, there's always been something to look forward to. Edna. Yes. You do know him terribly well, don't you? You'd be sure to know if... If... If he cared for you. Oh, Fanny, he's confided in me for years, even over silly little temporary attachments. He wouldn't keep a thing like that from me. No. I believe that. How dense men are. I saw in a flash last night that you were getting the wrong impression. 
I'm desperately sorry for you. Will you let me pay for some training for you? No. You'll stop on here. I don't know what I shall do. I uh, ought to get on with my work. Mrs. Randolph will be wanting me. Stay here a bit. I'll go and dance attendance on her. My dear, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's all right. I've been a fool. It was kindest to tell me. You stay here quietly till you feel a little better. <sighs> hello. Oh, um, Cynthia, hello. Where's mm. the little scrap child? Oh, they're all out walking. I got some hot cakes from court. Like one? Mm, no, thank you. What's the matter? Oh, it's nothing. <laughs> Penny, darling, <laughs> whatever is it? She said everyone knew. Knew what? Penny, well, then she'll have to want, Hilda. Oh, Penny's upset. Penny, dear, what's the matter? Oh, is it Nicholas? Oh, he doesn't mean to be unkind. He hasn't been unkind. Oh, you did know that you're fond of it. Oh, no harm in that, is there? You didn't know, did you, Cynthia? You couldn't. You haven't been home for years. I used to think you were a bit smitten with him. Oh, has it been going on all these years? Lord, how unhappy you must be. I've never been unhappy. I've loved my life here. People have been good to me. And he's always been kind. But only kind. Uh, I suppose so. But, but just lately, last night and this morning, he was he was different somehow. And I thought... <laughs> but I'm what Edna calls an unsophisticated woman. I've just made a fool of myself. Do you mean Edna actually had the cheek to... Oh, I think she meant it kindly. Hmm... Perhaps Nicholas knows all the time and is just pitying me. <laughs> she says he doesn't, but I expect she'll tell him. Oh, no, she won't. We'll take care of that. Now, buck up, old thing. I know. Oh, sorry I'm making such an ass of myself. Oh, Lord, I haven't cried for years. Oh, there are dozens of jobs waiting for me. Oh, if only she'd waited till after this weekend. How am I going to get through? Oh, poor girl. Yes. What's up with Penny? Oh, come in a minute and, and close the door. Right. Mother wants the bells on the dance program painted gold. It's a nice, peaceful job, and I'm going to take a long time. Did over it. you know Fanny was in love with Nicholas? Yes, of course. Has she gone violent or something? It's Edna. As far as I can make out, she's been warning Fanny off. Oh, what damn cheek. Is there anything between Nicholas and Edna? <laughs> Good Lord, no. She's years older than he is. She's managed to scare other women out of Nicholas's life pretty effectively. Hmm. Jolly convenient to have a good-looking young man to trot you around London. Of course, he's always been very fond of Fanny. Really fond? Oh, not what you'd call fond. Hmm. Well, she's just a piece of family furniture to him. Oh, we must get her away from here. Hmm. You could give her a job in your office, Hilda. What do you suppose we do in my office? Make beds and mend stockings. Oh, but she's terrified that Nicholas knows. Any girl with any pride... I do see that. Of course, I never had any pride. I just twined myself round Kenny. Well, if Nicholas does suspect, she must show him he's wrong. Tell her to flirt with all the lads in the village tonight. Tell you what, I'll lend her Kenny. Ken will carry on with anyone who cooks their little finger at him. Don't you mind? Oh, not in the least. I know what happens to husbands that don't carry on. You see nature in the raw at our golf club. I wonder if she could carry it off. Of course she can. She's got quite a bit of spirit. Well, it won't really take Nicholas in if he has spotted her, but she'll think it will. And then she can settle down to another ten years' patient adoration. Oh, damn that blasted Edna. Oh. Hello, Scrap. I didn't know there was anyone here. Come in. Did you have a good walk? Yes, thank you. Come and sit by the fire. I'm not cold, thank you. Are you going to wear that dress tonight? No, it's Fanny's. Why? I just thought it looked a nice sort of dress. It's a bit like one Mummy used to wear. She always liked soft, pretty dresses. Yes. Aren't you Cynthia? Yes, Scrap. There was a photograph of her and you in dresses made exactly alike, with lots of frills on. Mm. I remember. It was taken on our 21st birthday. We look quite a bit alike in that photograph. Yes, I thought you did. But I suppose it was only the dresses. Mm. 
You're not a bit like her, really. That's funny, isn't it? I thought twins were always alike. We were very much alike. In our fault. I missed her terribly when she married and went to Singapore. Do you still miss her? Well, perhaps you'd rather not talk about it. I think I would like to talk about it. Everyone seems to be frightened of mentioning her. Oh, we don't want to upset you. But it doesn't upset me. It brings her back a bit. That's why I wanted to come to this house, to see the thing she is to see. I suppose I sound silly. Not to me. I believe I'm in exactly the same place that you are. A sort of limbo of the mind. Oh, that was stupid of me. You couldn't understand. But I do know about limbo. It's in between heaven and hell. People there aren't happy and they aren't miserable. They just aren't anything. Why, of course, I see. That is it. You're very intelligent. I am in bits. <laughs> Why are you in limbo, Aunt Cynthia? Oh, I'm talking a lot of nonsense. Shall we um, play something? There used to be some games in this cupboard. There's Ludo and Helmet, snakes and ladders. Oh, is that a teddy bear there? Yes. Why, it's Simp. Simp? Oh, we called him that because he was extra sympathetic. You know, we used to hug him whenever we were miserable, when we were in disgrace or the rabbits died, or when nobody understood us. Did Mummy hug him? We all did. Went on until we were quite big. Is he still sympathetic? Well, he looks it to me. Are you Simp? Yes, of course he is. His fur used to get all sopping with tears. Oh, comfortable sin. He must be over 30 years old. Oh, there's your granny calling. She does seem to call people rather a lot, doesn't she? <laughs> Aunt Cynthia, will we ever get out of limbo? You will, Scrub. I promise you by everything that ever was. And I promise you to. Scrap, dear, your granny wants you. Yes, I'm coming. Goodbye, Sim. Hello, has old Sim turned up? <laughs> well, I've had a word with Edna. Ah, uh, what did she say? Oh, uh, all done from the highest motives. Ah. Felt it her duty, deeply upset. Uh -huh. She's gone to bed with aspirin, if you please, while poor Richard Fenny's got to carry on as usual. However, she says Nicholas doesn't know, which is something. And I must tell Fanny. Oh, I've told her. Was she terribly relieved? Well, of course. But she's still pretty nervous. She'll do anything on earth to put him off the scent. I offered her Kenneth, and she was very much obliged. Ah. And apparently, there's a man in the village who's rather keen on her. He's coming tonight. A sort of, um, gentleman chicken farmer. I suppose you'd better give Kenneth a hint. Oh, I shall tell him to give her a break. But I shan't tell him why. He won't need much encouraging. Oh, Marjorie. Baby's just dropping off. Manny's simply marvellous with him. I wish we had you always, Manny. So do I, Mr. You. I've been like a dog with two tails all this weekend. <sighs> well, we couldn't afford you, even if Granny could spare you. It is a shame. You're wasted here with no babies to handle. You'd think maybe I'd have lost the knack after all these years of housework. But get me in this old nursery again and it all comes back. I've always had a way with babies. Even when I was 15, I could manage them better than old Nanny who was here. Not that she'd admit it. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think I'll just sit by him till he's right off. Bless you, Nanny, dear. Happy, darling. Very. Good. So am I. Oh, there you are. Hello, Mother. Have you seen Nicholas anywhere? Not for an hour or so. He was hunting for Fanny. I think she cut a dance or something. I must say, I thought she was behaving a bit oddly, didn't you? Giggling and prompting. Poor girl. Why poor? She seemed to be enjoying herself. Wonder if she's had a drop too much champagne. What a laugh. Don't be so incredibly vulgar, Hugh. Oh, really, Mother? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Good night. Good night. Good night. Something wrong there. Ought I to go after her? Lord, no, no. She hates being fussed over. 
Shall we go down and dance again? Yes, let's. Oh, hello, Kenny. Ah, um, Kenny's feeling a bit done up. Thought it might be quiet up here. Anything I can do? Oh, no, thanks. I, I'm quite all right, really. Well, don't make a row or you'll wake our offspring. Quiet as my old boy. Now, <laughs> <laughs> oh, sit down and put your feet up. Shall I? Why not? All right. Hmm. Well, that's it. I say, what jolly little shoes. You're a bit of a Cinderella, you know. <laughs> turning up at the ball and cutting everyone else out. Mm. There. Hey! Now Cinderella's lost her slipper. Oh, that's where the resemblance ends. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to hang about at midnight anyhow. What for? Didn't all her clothes fall off? No, they just turned to rags. Oh. And next day she was back in the kitchen. Ah. But then the prince rolled along. wonder if he kept chickens. Huh? Oh, uh, you mean that chap with the bald head you were carrying on with? Mm. I say, you haven't half been going it tonight. You've been a bit of a surprise yourself. Well, you didn't mind me kissing you, did you? No, did uh, Marjorie tell you to? Oh, heavens no. Didn't she tell you to be nice to me? Well, she did tell me to dance with you a bit. But the rest have been entirely my own initiative. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I say, you, you won't tell, will you? I promise. Good oh, girl. <laughs> Do you think, um, that pretty little foot's ticklish at all? What? Ticklish? No. Ticklish, did you no. say? No. Oh, no, no, Ken, don't. No. No. Oh, no, Ken, for goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 Sorry if I'm interrupting. What? Uh, oh, Nicholas. <laughs> I hate to seem fussy, but you've cut four dances with me. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I lost my programme anyway. I can't dance anymore. I'm too hot. <laughs> so it would appear. <laughs> Shut up in here, can't you? You'll wake the infant. I'll just go and put some powder on. Marjorie was looking for you, Kenneth. Oh, uh, was she? Hmm. I suppose I'd better go and report. Thanks. I've been reading to the kids. It's hopeless to expect them to sleep at a dance in the house. And what a dance. Half the village seems to be here. Did you notice Fanny? I thought she looked very pretty. Oh, she always looks quite pretty. Good Lord, I think she must have gone a bit dotty tonight. She's danced six times running with that frightful chicken farmer. There's no law against it. But you should have seen her giggling and flirting. And just now with Kenneth. She doesn't get many parties. I don't blame her for enjoying herself. Oh, well, I suppose the poor little devil doesn't know any better. Honey, I could have sworn she had a natural dignity. Nicholas, do you like Fanny? Hmm? Of course I like her. That's why it's rather painful to see her making an ass of herself. Do we all like her? She's a family institution. Ah, oh, yes. I... I think we ought to go down. Oh, I suppose so. Now, for heaven's sake, why aren't you young things dancing? Feeling rather mature, aren't we? What was that? Nonsense. We have the plan ourselves, didn't we, Charles? Now we're going to indulge in a little sitting out. Oh, the beautiful Blue Danube. Oh, yes. Do you remember the dancing class, Tim? <laughs> and mittens and bronze sandals. And you boys skulking in the corner. Come on. Oh. We'll show them. Oh, all right. <laughs> the Blue Danube. They played it at our dancing classes, too. And at the dance your mother gave for us bridesmaids the night of your wedding. Oh, I missed that. I rather think I was on the English Channel thanking God I'd married a good sailor. That was the night I accepted your brother William. There didn't seem to be any point in going on refusing him. Did you know about me then, Charles, or, or not till afterwards? I think I always knew. You know, there's something rather luxurious in being able to sit back and tell a man you've been in love with him for 50 years. <laughs> I guess I'm entitled to some sort of golden anniversary myself. My dear Bill. You've never written your book, Charles, or, or gone into Parliament. All the things you planned as a boy. Yeah, never done any of them. You would have done if you'd married me. I wonder. You know, you women are much too fond of fancying you can make geniuses of men. 
And anyway, there are far too many books written and far, far too many people in Parliament. Now, don't pretend, Charles. You had great gifts. Mm, not really, Bill. You see, when I came to have a little leisure to explore the minds of other men, I found that everything I wanted to say had been said by someone else. I was always expecting to get some epoch-making new idea, but I never did. I think I might have had a shot at politics. But there were so many far more important things to do. What things? Well, there have been children to play with, dogs to take walks, gardens to plan, neighbors to visit. And you call these things important? I do indeed. I call the sum total of any man's happiness important. Have you been happy, Charles? So happy that I'm sometimes tempted to erect a statue to myself. I should like people to be reminded that happiness isn't quite obsolete. Have you been happy, Bill? That's rather a cruel question. Nonsense. Now, confess now. You haven't given me a thought for years. I've thought of you every day of my life, and I'm not ashamed to own it. Well, you never did have a proper sense of shame. You were a baggage at seven, and you're a baggage at seventy. Do you really think that? Did you think it thirty years ago, after William died? I'd certainly every cause to. You came very near to breaking up this happy home, you know. No. No, never that. Then shall we say to putting rather a blot on the escutcheon. But I didn't manage it. <laughs> no. You didn't manage it. Oh, don't gloat so. You were always cruel to me. Because you were a challenge and a menace. And always will be. Oh. Oh, Charles. Oh, my dear, I was teasing you. Oh, I, I find one's never too old to be hurt. Oh, God bless my soul, you preposterous woman. Two husbands, and Lord knows how many sidelines... And just because one poor country nut managed to resist you. No. No, no, no. I won't sentimentalize with you. What you need's a stiff whiskey. Come on. Oh, here you are. <laughs> Why, Bell, dear. Um, we've been talking over old times. Uh, poor William, you know. Of course. Poor William. Yes, and, uh, and your other husband, your American husband, what was his name? Elma. Poor Elma. Hmm. How I wish they could both be here. So I suppose that wouldn't be quite practicable. Get her a good, strong drink, Charles. I was suggesting mm. it. I'll be with you in a minute, dear, but I just want to have a word with Nanny. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm a silly old woman. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever seen you cry, Bill. And it'll be the last. Lead me to that whiskey. Are we all asleep, Nanny? Miss Scrap is. The other two are beyond human control. They've gone down to get some more supper out of Cook. Good gracious. Well, it's a very special occasion. You'd better make the fire up in case any of them are ill in the night. Yes, Mum. Not finding it too much for you, are you, Nanny? Oh, indeed, no, Mum. It's a great pleasure. It's been like old times, having them all to look after. How long have you been with us, Nanny? Forty-seven years, Mum. Oh, and I came as nursemaid when Mr. Peter was six months old. He was the best baby of them all. And his little grandson's just like him. My dear Peter, we shall see him again, Mum. Of course we shall. I've been thinking of him a lot this evening, and I keep on remembering you in that blue dressing gown with the little white bows, whisking in and out like you used to at night when any of them were ill, with your pretty fair hair down your back. Fancy you remembering that. <laughs> what a long time we've been friends, Nanny. And now you must go to bed, because baby will wake you early. Yes, Mum. <laughs> Good night, Nan. And thank you for all those years. Sleep well. Thank you, Mum. Good night. Hello, dear. Is Belle all right now? Yes, she's doing up her face. Poor Belle. She's as much in love with you as ever. At her <laughs> age. Aren't you in love with me? I hope I don't make eyes at you. <laughs> 
Ah, that must have been the last dance. Yeah. I told them to play those old waltzes at the end. People like them. Yes. Did you notice Fanny tonight? Indeed, I did. Mark my words, that chicken farmer is going to propose. Good Lord. She wouldn't accept him. Well, he isn't nearly good enough for her, but every woman likes to marry. You could lend him a little capital. <laughs> oh, dear. I haven't spoken to Cynthia yet. Mm, whole day wasted. <gasps> oh, I must tackle it tomorrow. It's tomorrow now. Our golden wedding day. Many, many congratulations. And to you, my love. Charles. Yes? I know it isn't really the right moment, but um, something Nanny was saying. Yes, my dear? It's something we haven't discussed for years. Has religion ever got any clearer to you? No, my dear. I don't think it has. I was afraid not. You still don't believe there's anything after life? Well, I used to be sure there was nothing. Yes? Now, I'm not sure of anything. Oh, but that's a very definite improvement. <laughs> Dora, are you quite sure about heaven? Utterly and completely sure. Then I find that more convincing than anything. You see, my dear, in all our discussions for the last 50 years, you have invariably been right. Bless you. <laughs> oh, that's no. They're playing Sir Roger. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, it's, it's been a good party, I think. Yeah, we must go down, dear. Yes, yes, we must. I don't so loathe this job. Gertrude could do it in half the time. Oh, no. We always have labour tables for family parties and we always shout. <laughs> it's a sort of right. There's the napkins. I'll put them on the sideboard. Oh, thank you, Gertrude. The mistress says, will you please make them into water lilies? Water lilies? Oh, this must is not fresh. I'd better make some more. These flowers aren't up to much. Everyone seems to seem quite tall for them. <laughs> Gracious, what do you do with a dreadful old pern? We haven't used it for years. Oh, Mother, and I've been simply wrestling with it. Put it away, dear, and we'll have a cut glass bowl instead. A cut glass? Yes. I'd better go and see how the children are getting on. Oh, Marjorie. Yes. Can you absolutely guarantee that when your father says grace tonight, Bill will not say selfish? <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Well, I don't think there's much more I can do. The, the napkins, dear. Oh, I never could do water, did you? Then I'll do them and you shall sit and talk to me. They're on the sideboard, dear. I ought to be dressing. There's plenty of time yet. This is the last chance of a chat we shall have, if you really insist on going tomorrow. I'm afraid I must. Here they are. Yeah, put them here, dear. <sighs> well, I must think how to do a water lily. Now sit down, darling. Mm. You know, you need a holiday. You're looking tired. Not really. Just old, I expect. Nonsense. You're a young woman. Thirty-seven. <laughs> I think that's a charming age. Don't waste it, my dear. Waste it. Cynthia, dear, I've been trying to talk to you all this weekend. You're not happy. Yes, I am, Mother. Perfectly happy. But anyone can see that you're not of course, your father and I have realized for years that there are things in your life you don't want us to know about. We should never dream of trying to force your confidence. Uh. But don't stay away for another seven years, because it really isn't necessary. Mother, you're just imagining things. Nonsense, dear. Did Edna tell you? I shouldn't dream of gossiping about you with Edna. But I do know no woman of your temperament who doesn't marry could have spent all those years in Paris in, well, shall we say, a strictly conventional manner. Don't you mind? I can't think anything you could do quite terrible enough to make me want to lose touch with you. Wasn't that terrible? Would it be married if we could have been? Would be French? No, English. His wife is fine. Oh, mm. She won't divorce him. No. 
it over, Mother. He went back to her and expects she got tired of him. Mm. My dearest child. Oh, I'm all right. It knocked me out for a bit, but I'm over it now. And is this all that kept you away from us? For seven years, I suppose so. Oh, Mother, how you've changed. You used to be so strict in your ideas. I had four daughters to bring up. Well, I have changed. Well, there wouldn't be much point in living to be 70 if one didn't. I always did like you better than any woman I ever met. <laughs> My dear. Uh, must you... Must you go back to Paris? I finished with Paris. I can go to Raquel's London house if I like, or I think she'd send me to America. Why not come home for a little while, dear? You mean just stay on? Well, uh, only for a short time, of course. Mm. Uh, we, we'd never try to keep you. But just for a little holiday. You used to be so fond of the autumn, and we could slip up to town for some theatres and concerts. <laughs> Do you remember our little jaunts? Mm. And if you could stay till spring, it, it, it's so very beautiful here. Spring never gets any older, you know. Very well, my dear. I, I won't press it, of course. I just thought that you might like it. I think I'd like it more than anything in the world. You mean you will stay? It's a really fancy and a really prodigal daughter. Oh. <laughs> Darling, you're trembling and you sounded so calm. Well, I, I, I was just a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Good gracious, now, don't start to cry or I'll simply wreck your face. Oh, yes. <laughs> now, hurry up and dress. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, oh, 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 it's all right, Fanny. Come along, Cynthia. We'll have a glass of sherry. Yes. Um, oh, Fanny, dear, will you do the, uh, the water lilies? I'm afraid I wasn't quite concentrating. Uh, yes, of course. telephone message for you about half an hour ago. I couldn't find you anywhere. I was dressing. Your charming chicken farmer friend wants you to take tea with him tomorrow at 4.30 at his delightful bungalow so appropriately called The Nest. Thank you. Shall we go? If I can be spared. It'll be quiet when you've all gone. Yes, I think I shall go. What fun. You have such good taste in men. Is that meant to be rude? Yes, I think it is. Good Lord. What's the matter with you, Fanny? What do you mean? Encouraging this poor wretched man. Before you know where you are, he'll be proposing to you. Is that a crime? Oh, perhaps he's proposed already. He gods, I believe he has. Are you going to accept him? I haven't made up my mind. You're not serious? Oh, certainly I am, and it's none of your business. It's the business of the whole family. We've known and liked you for ten years. The man's a common little bounder. I don't think so. I suppose you were playing Kenneth off against him last night to bring him up to the scratch. I can't think why you let me out. I should have been delighted to have helped. Good Lord, I couldn't have believed you'd have made yourself so cheap. Please go away. Dressing up and giggling and flirting. And if you're going to use rouge, you'd better learn to use it properly. I am not using rouge. You were last night. If you want to know, you look like an elderly schoolgirl. Oh. oh. What a damnable thing to say. I'm sorry, Fanny. It wasn't true, anyhow. You look very pretty. I've hurt you, haven't I? <laughs> Do you remember wondering if I could be cruel? You said you never could be to me. Listen, my dear, there must be something behind this that I don't understand. Are you thinking of marriage as a safeguard for the future? It's got nothing to do with that. And what the devil is it? Oh, good Lord, I believe Edna was right. What do you mean? And she said once that most women would rather marry anyone than no one. I haven't made up my mind to marry him. I can't go see now. You could even let him propose. Oh, Lord, let's chuck it or I shall be rude again. Oh, somehow the very thought of it makes my blood boil. I'm sorry I've been so insulting. That's all right. Uh, are you going to do the grand toast tonight? I suppose so. Never felt less like it. Funny that, I usually rather enjoy it. 
And I'd better walk around the garden, try to mug something up. You're making an awful mess of those napkins. Well, you have been a little distracting. Poor old Fanny. You will marry him, of course. Otherwise, you'd never have let him on. Well, you must see something in him. Lord, I couldn't be more disappointed in anyone. Hello, Penny. Oh. What is it, my dear? Brother Fiddy? No, I can't bear it any longer. Oh, couldn't you say I was ill? All this long evening to go to it. Penny, our golden wedding evening. I'm sorry, but I can't stand any more. How could he? Nicholas, of course. Oh, everyone knows. He certainly doesn't. No. <laughs> That's the one bit of comfort there is. Mr. Randolph, please tell me, was I vulgar and silly last night? You were a little skitty. Oh, it was so cruel. Cruel? Oh, but it's not his fault. And you see, he was, he was so disappointed in me. And I've got to go on pretending to be what he thinks I am now, never to let him see what Why? I... Why? Pride, I suppose. Oh, I see. Is pride worth all that trouble? I never had any myself, of course. Now, pull yourself together, my dear. If you really want to go to bed, you'd better go at once. I'll make your excuses. No, no, I couldn't. Not, not your golden wedding dinner. I'll be all right. I'll, uh, I'll go and do my face. Was Nicholas really unkind? Terribly. He's always been so sweet to me. Yes. I see. Do you think I could marry Mr. Jones? Mr. Jones? You know, at the chicken farm. Good gracious. I should hardly have said so. I don't think so either. I don't even like him. Dear me. Poor Fanny. Oh, Charles, I've been looking for you. My dear, it's all right. What is? Cynthia. Ah. I had it out with her. And really, it's nothing terrible. Well, of course it is. But times change, and ah. anyhow, it's over, and she's staying on indefinitely. Right. And she'll be able to help me with scrap, as her father's marrying again. Yeah, hold on. Ah. Well, I had a letter from him yesterday. I told you. Oh, didn't I? Oh, well, I meant to. He wants us to take sole charge for the time being, and she's taken a tremendous fancy to Cynthia. Uh, oh, dear. What? <laughs> I was thinking how terribly shocked my dear mother would have been about Cynthia. She had such rigid principles. Yes. Yes. But it's better to lose a principle than to lose a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I've had three glasses of sherry. Daughter? <laughs> yes. With Cynthia to cheer her up. <laughs> oh, there's the dressing gong. Yes. Uh, I must just have a word with Nicholas. Well, don't be long, dear. Dinner in half an hour. Now then, Nicholas. Come on, Uncle Nick. Come on, everyone. <coughs> uh, we're an abstemious family, both in drink and speeches. We make one speech and drink one family toast at Christmas, at New Year, and at all our uh, family gatherings. So we've always done right back, I believe, into Great Grandfather's Day. But tonight, uh, wondering what I should say to you, it seemed to me another toast was called for. And none of my generation remembers a golden wedding in this house. And indeed, I think they're rarer throughout the world in these days of later marriage and earlier divorce. <laughs> it's a great occasion for us all, and one I felt which could well warrant a break with our tradition. <coughs> and so I planned a separate toast for the father and mother on their golden wedding day. <laughs> and uh, then I, I knew this could not be, for they are the family and never for any occasion shall they be separated from it in our thoughts. We've already given them our presents, good wishes, and our love, which indeed is always theirs. And now this golden wedding is no longer theirs alone, but ours to share with them. 
And so, once more, I shall propose grand toast to our family. Um, uh, wandering round the garden just now, I was trying to remember when I first proposed this toast. It was the year our father had Laren's writing. 1919. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever the year, I know I felt very young and nervous. I'd mugged up three quotations and two funny stories, uh, which I meant to tell with uh, exquisite point. And when the moment came, I didn't use any of them. <laughs> perhaps the patron saints of family gatherings came to my aid. If so, I hope you may come again tonight. Uh, for again, uh, nothing that I planned seems quite right. I haven't even a quotation. I couldn't make a joke to save my life. Uh, for it came to me suddenly, just now, that a family gathering like this is no joking matter. One hears so many jokes against families. The family quarrels, family jealousies, family tyrannies. Always the family is either the villain or the clown of the piece. Well, the clown shall stand, for clowns are likeable folk, but not the villain. And for me, at least, tonight it shall play the hero. And it does possess heroic qualities. How else is it spied? It no longer has the power of a tyrant. Who today ever feels any real family authority? Even the children do exactly what they want. Oh, look, that's not fair. <laughs> well, near enough for you two. I mean, look at you, interrupting your aged uncle's touching feet. No reverence, no awe. But I bet you'll make as good a family man as any of us do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we grumble at our families. We treat them as a bad joke. And we hear on every hand that uh, family ties are slackening, and yet we pack the trains at Christmas going home. Yes, yes, indeed. A sense of duty, only. I wonder. We're a very ordinary family. We, uh, we own no crests, no heirlooms, and our few ancestors are uh, very badly painted. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what they would think of us. Great-grandfather over there with his twinkle and... Grandmama, she wasn't quite as fierce as that, but she was a little fierce. I think she might shake her head and say, the family isn't what it was. <laughs> and there, most honoured Grandmama, lies its strength. It is, like nearly every British institution, adaptable. It bends, it, it stretches, but it never breaks. And so I give you our toast. From that young man upstairs who's had the impudence to make me a great uncle <laughs> to mother and father on their golden wedding. Through four generations of us and to those who've gone and those who are to come. To the family. That dear octopus from whose tentacles we never quite escape, nor in our inmost hearts ever quite wish to. Ladies and gentlemen, Grand Toast. Grand, Grand, Grand Toast. toast. Brother Nicholas. Very good indeed, my boy. Oh, yes. oh, I never oh, heard you so emotional. Well, we liked it, didn't we, Scrap? <laughs> I rather query one of your similes. Discuss it in the drawing room, will you, dear? Oh, Gertrude will be on the rampage. Penny, yes. um, get an eight box. Yes, of course. I think you should have replied, Charles. No, no, thank you, Belle. One speech is enough. All you want to do now, old man, is to start a family for yourself. <laughs> oh, hello. Uh, father forgot his glasses. Uh, oh, they're here. Still angry with me. You were the angry one. Uh, shall we make it up? If you like. Doesn't matter anyhow. Matters to me. Friends? Of course. You know, don't you? Yes. Did Edna tell you? No. Who did then? Oh, I know, your father. Yes. Hmm. He said pride wasn't important. 
He was right. Oh, I think I'm rather glad, you know. Oh, how queer. I used to think it would be the end of the world. Oh, you, you don't mind terribly, do you? It needn't worry you or embarrass you. After tonight, we'll, we'll never refer to it again. Will you marry me, Fanny? What? Will you marry me? No. Oh, how could you? I can't help loving you. I'm not ashamed of it. It's been my secret happiness for years, but to say that to me when I know it's meaningless... Sorry. I, I expect you mean to be kind, but pity can be very humiliating. Don't be a juggins, dear. Men don't propose out of pity. Do you mean you're in love with me? I really love you, Fanny. You don't believe me? I don't know. Oh, you are a truthful person, but, but surely you couldn't find that out suddenly just because your father told you just in an hour or two. Almost in a flash. <laughs> Listen, I believe I've been in love with you for years and never realized it. Uh, and then, after we'd been sitting by the fire the other evening, mm. something Edna said, quite inadvertently, made me see you as a different person. And uh, do you remember in the nursery, Penny? You on the cupboard? Yes. I think I almost knew I loved you then. Last night, you and your goings-on with Kenneth and that wretched chicken farmer, I could cheerfully have killed a lot of you. And I'm very much ashamed of myself. Now, I suppose I was just plain jealous. Oh, how glorious! The <laughs> loathsome things I said to you. Oh. You'll never see a worse side of me than you've seen this weekend. The teething stage of love is very confusing. Oh, Nicholas. With that speech you made just now, sincere, you've never made a speech like that before. No, I couldn't have done it. Never in my life. That speech was not only to the family, but to our future. Oh, Fanny. Darling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh. Well, me! Kissing! Bill, Fanny's going to marry me. Is she? Crikey, I am pleased. She's not going to tell this one. No, wait, no, not yet. My dear, you'll oh. never muzzle that. Listen, listen, everyone. Nicholas and Fanny are engaged. Are you ready? Yes. Come on, then. In Dear Octopus by Dodie Smith. Adapted for radio by Cynthia Pugh. The parts of Dora and Charles Randolph were played by Gwen Frank and Davis and Robert Harris. Fenny was played by Lisa Harrow and Nicholas by Martin Jarvis. Belle Schlesinger was played by Barbara Cooper. Edna Randolph, Irene Sutcliffe, Hugh, Tim Bentink, Laurel, Greta Gurrier. Hilda, Monica Gray. Cynthia, Joe Manning Wilson, Marjorie Harvey, Eva Haddon, and Kenneth Garrard Green. Bill was played by Elizabeth Lindsay, Flouncy, Susan Sheridan, Scrap, Bernadette Windsor, Nanny, Margot Boyd, and Gertrude, Janet Burnell. The play was directed by David H. Godfrey. <laughs>